Today we're talking about experimental and theoretical probability. Please make sure that you have these two um, things written out for me. Theoretical is the probability where you have your favorable outcomes over the total outcomes. This is what we think should happen, okay? This is what we would predict. Experimental is what actually happens. It's very scientific in that we think about what should happen and then when we actually do it, we look at the experiment. So, if we were spinning a spinner, we would look at what we think would happen. For example, if it had one red blank spot out of 10, we would think, okay, theoretically it would happen one out of 10. But when we actually do the experiment, it might have happened three times out of 10. It just depends on what happens when you actually do it. Okay, so let's look at some more. Experimental would be the number of successes over the number of trials. For example, if we're training our cat to know how to shake on command and they offer one of its front paws, we could look to see how many times it offered its left versus its right. So the experimental probability that the cat will offer its right paw, if we did this experiment, this would be 50 times. And if you look at here, the cat shook 12 out of 50 times or six out of 25. And if we look at this, that would be the experiment that we did. Because if you think theoretically, if you look at it, it should be one half, right? Left paw versus right paw. So if we look at this, what is the theoretical probability that the coin is gonna land on heads? So the probability of heads would be one half. Same with the probability of tails, it would also be one half. This is what we think should happen when we flip a coin. If we actually conduct the experiment, for example, flip this coin and stop it. It landed on heads once, and then let's do it again. It landed on it again. Oh, it landed on it again. Now it lands on tails. Let's do it um, 10 times. Tails again. Heads again, heads again, tails, tails, heads. Okay, so it landed on heads six out of 10 times while it landed on tails four out of 10 times. We can simplify this to three fifths and this to two fifths. So if we look, those are neither a half. So the experimental probability is always going to be different. So the probability of heads for this experiment was three-fifths, and the probability of tails was two-fifths. Suppose you do a survey and we found all this information on the types of, of blood types of two different or 200 people. These are the results that we obtained. Let's find the probability that a person has type O positive. So we have 76 out of 200, which would be 19 over 50 if we simplify it by dividing by four on both sides. Okay, you go ahead and try these next three. I'll be back in just a second to show you the answers. Okay, making sure that we have the probability and we put O positive, 19 over 50, the rest of them would be the following. Let's take a look. Okay, so if you look at my work, the probability of A negative was 12 out of 200, but that simplified to three out of 50. The probability of B positive was um, 18 out of 200, and that simplifies to nine out of 100. And if you look here at AB positive or AB negative, it's eight out of 200 because we add them together and that would be one out of 25. All right, let's look at another one. You have the picture number tiles in a bag. What's the probability of drawing a three, a five, or a three or four? Let's try these three. Go ahead and I'll be back in just a second to show you the answer. Okay, making sure that you have your probability for each of these written down, that's important to have, don't forget it. Um, if we look here, there's eight total tiles. So the probability of getting a three is two eighths or one fourth. The probability of getting five, there isn't any. 
So eight or zero over eight, if you put that in your calculator, remember that's okay to have um, zero divided by some number because that just equals zero. It's not okay to have the opposite. You can't divide by zero. And three or four, well, we have one, two, three options then out of eight, and that can't be simplified. A bag contains nine cubes colored brown, orange, and purple. As an experiment, Chad randomly picks out a cube of the bag, records the color, and puts it back in the bag. The table shows the results of him doing this 150 times. So he is literally doing an experiment. That's why we're finding experimental probability. What is the experimental probability of Chad selecting a brown cube? So the probability of a brown, we write it down like this. We know that he did this 150 times, so that is our um, possible outcomes at the bottom. And the ones that we actually had were 72. So when we simplify 72 out of 150, we get 12 over 25. Probability of purple would have been 42 out of 150 or 7 out of 25. What's the experimental probability of Chad picking an orange or a brown cube? Well, if we look at this, three of each colored cubes, oh, excuse me, experimental probability would be orange and brown. So we're looking here, we're going to add 72 plus 36, and we get 108. So the probability of orange or brown would be 108 out of 150. We can simplify that, though. Both these numbers are divisible by 6, so we get um, 18 over 25. How many purple cubes would you expect Chad to select if he performed the experiment 200 times? Now we need a proportion. Make sure you write this down. If he gets purple 42 out of 150 times, how many will he get it out of 200? Let's use algebra to help us solve this. So cross products, 150 times x would be 150x. And 42 times 200, oops, 42 times 200 gives us 8,400. So how do I get rid of the 150? If it's being multiplied, I have to divide both sides by the 150. And I get 56. So x equals 56. So we could predict, we can say, if we continued the experiment and we did it 200 times, we would expect to get purple 56 out of those 200 times. All right, and that's all I have for you. I will see you next time.